For this project, you're going to learn how to replace a sky with another one and three essential keys for doing it right. So let's open up image 01 from your section 5 folder. And the first thing we want to do is duplicate this layer here so we can work non-destructively. Let's go ahead and turn this background layer off and then let's make a selection of our sky. So we're going to use our fuzzy select tool and I'm going to set my threshold to right around 25 and I'm going to use draw mask to assist in the selection process. So I'm going to click, drag down and try and get as much of the sky as possible without the foreground. So let's go ahead and back away. Now with the shift key, I can click and drag down and continue making my selection. Now I'm starting to get a little bit of that foreground again, but we're going to use our quick mask mode to refine our selection. I just want to make sure all of the sky here is selected. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to grab our zoom tool with the letter Z and click and drag in. Let's go into our quick mask mode with shift plus Q. Let's grab our paintbrush tool with the letter P and we want to paint with black so we can remove from the selection. So I'm going to go ahead and paint in this area and continue removing from the selection. Okay, shift plus Q again to get out of it. I need to do a little bit more refining here. So I think that should be pretty good. Now command or control shift plus J to zoom all the way back out. All right, now that we have our sky selected, let's go ahead and apply a layer mask to hide those pixels. So we're going to come down here, click here. We're going to make sure we have selection selected and we're going to click add. And unfortunately, the wrong part of the image has been hidden. So let's undo that with command or control plus the letter Z. Let's go back inside of here, invert mask from here. We'll do just that and boom, this guy is gone. How cool is that? All right, we're now going to review the three key essentials for replacing skies to make them look realistic. And that is the direction of light, color of light, and creating an atmosphere condition. So let's review those with some images. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that the direction of light matches our original image or the original sky. So in this image, you can tell that the light is coming from over here on the left, away from or outside of the camera angle of view. And we know that because we have some shadows here coming from this mountain range. So it's coming from over here. So we want to make sure that the light and the set of clouds or the sky that we're going to use matches. Otherwise, it's going to look off. It's not going to look right. The other thing is the color of light. So in the original sky here, it's a light blue. But if you take a look at the light or the color of light right in this area here, you can see it's much warmer. So this tells me that this was taken later in the day close to sunset. So I would like to find a sky that was taken at the same time as this image. Now, unless you're taking the images yourself, you're not going to really know the time of day that an image was taken unless you can get the original raw file that will have the metadata, the time for that particular image. So when it was created. Now, let's look at some images to see why this is important. So this image here, I took this set of clouds or captured it in the middle of the day. So you can kind of tell that the lighting and the color is different. So it's not really going to match the original. This image here, you can definitely see the direction of the light. It's directly behind the cloud. So again, it's not going to match the direction of the light here. Now, as far as the time of day, this one was later in the day. I believe that the sun was pretty much below the horizon when I took this. So the colors are much more vibrant, more saturated, warmer, more orange. We have some purple, some blue. So again, it's not matching. So we want to try and find a set of clouds or a sky that matches as closely as possible. So I have this set of clouds here. We have the sun over here on the right side. It's near the horizon, but it's not completely down. It's a little bit warmer than the sky here, but we have some warmth in the colors on the mountain range right here. So I think this set of clouds would work well for this image other than the direction of the light. But that's not a problem because we can flip the canvas 
so that the light is over on the side. So this particular image is not included in this class and that's because I want you to find your own sky, your own set of clouds and try and find something that matches the time of day, the color of light, the direction of light. To add this layer to this image over here, we're going to click and drag over the tab and then I can release over top. Now the one thing I want to do is undo that with Commander Control plus the letter Z. And I also want to deselect. So I'm going to go up to select and click on none. Now another way to add a layer is to grab your file from your systems operating folder or the folder system and click and drag over your canvas and then it will be added as a new layer. Now if that's not working for you, you can go up to file, open as layers and then it will open up that image as a new layer. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag this below my layer mask here so I can see that sky. Now I believe this set of clouds is much larger than the file that I have open right now, the mountain range that I'm working on. So I need to scale that smaller. So I'm going to grab my scale tool. I'm going to click and drag down and try and get it to fit within that canvas. If I click on this little square here, I can reposition it and it looks like it's pretty large. So I'm going to take a look here and I believe I resized the original image here from 5,000 pixels wide, I believe is what you have. And I scaled it down to 2,500. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 2,500 for the width to rescale or resize this image to fit within the canvas. So I'm going to make it just a little bit larger and I'm going to place it right there, then enter or return to rescale it. Now I have my light over here or the direction of the light is coming from over here. So let's go ahead and flip it now by going up to layer, transform and selecting flip horizontally. All right. Our light direction now matches the original. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my move tool with the letter M because I want to go ahead and move these clouds up a little bit higher. So maybe something like that. All right. So the third key is the atmospheric condition. What is that? Well, you'll notice in a lot of landscape photos that the sky at the top is darker than the sky at the horizon. It's going to be much brighter or there's going to be some transition from darker to lighter. And we can see that in this original image here. If I turn off my clouds here, you can see it's darker up here, but it's brighter down here. That's the atmospheric condition. So we're going to recreate that with a layer mask and a gradient. So the first thing we need to do is create a new layer. So I'm going to grab my background layer here. I'm going to click right here to create a new layer. You want to make sure you fill it in with white. Click OK and that's going to add the layer above and below the clouds here. So make sure this layer is below the clouds. If it's not, just click and drag it into position. All right, let's grab our set of clouds now and let's add a layer mask. And we're going to select white because white shows the pixels, black hides. And you need to make sure you turn off invert mask. Otherwise, it will invert the white to black. All right, let's click add. And now we're going to grab our gradient tool, which you can grab from the bucket fill tool group right here. We're going to right click, select gradient or press the letter G. Now in the tool options, you want to make sure that you click right here and select foreground to background and you want to make sure you have linear set to the shape and we want to paint with white to black. So we're going to start up here and drag down so it's going to apply white up here and slowly switch to black so there will be grays in between and that will reduce the transparency or begin to hide the pixels accordingly. So I'm going to click here drag down and that will then create that transition from dark to light. I'm going to go ahead and grab this right here and drag it up higher to create a smoother transition from light to dark. Okay, so once you have it set the way you want, I'm going to actually bring this back down. I'm going to click enter or return and you have your atmospheric condition. How cool is that? I love it.
All right, it's now your turn to apply your new knowledge and complete this project on your own.